Hi guys, I'm Becky and welcome back to my channel. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome, glad to have you along. We are everything finance here, talking about careers, investing, getting out of debt, budgeting, the whole nine yards. So feel free to subscribe to my channel and follow along so that you can learn and we can learn together. So today we're just going to be taking a look at my $30,000 stock portfolio. Now, we know that the market dipped just at the end of November, and we were just at the brink of me hitting the $30,000 mark. Well, it has corrected a little bit, and I have surpassed $30,000. So, I have a self-directed brokerage account with Ally, and that means that I have the complete control over what and how I invest my money. My overall goal is for this portfolio to function as a long-term dividend growth account where I'm returning about $2,000 a month in dividends. And with my current diversification strategy, that would account for about a $600,000 portfolio that returns 4% every single year. So I first started investing in the summer of 2013, right before Ally took over Tradekin actually, a couple years before that. And I, my initial investment was only $250, and I bought shares with Ford, Dolan Company, and Big Five Sporting Goods. And then the next year, I actually experienced my first loss, because Dolan Company actually went completely bankrupt, and I lost my entire investment with them, which was only about $40, so it wasn't the end of the world. But after that, the dividends kept coming in, and I kept reinvesting and adding a little bit of money here and there. And finally, by 2017, my portfolio was about $1,500, and then I went all in with investing. And I just started dumping money in. I mean, thousands of dollars every single year just dumping in. So the total amount that I've invested into this portfolio is $2,000, is $24,460. And as of December 7th, 2021, so just a couple days ago, my balance was $30,097 with an additional $71 in cash that is ready to be reinvested. Now, before we jump into individual stocks, I want to go over my diversification strategy, which is how I'm breaking down and figuring out what I'm investing in and when. So right now my portfolio is broken down into these sectors with finance making up 25% of my portfolio tech making up 15%, real estate and consumer staples making up another 15% each, utilities making up 10%, healthcare and energy both bringing in 5%, telecommunication is 3%, and then bonds with ETFs, industrials, and consumer discretionaries bringing in 2% each, leaving materials with 1%. Now, I try and stay close to this with all of my investing decisions. It's the backbone of what I am basing my entire breakdown on. And I track my portfolio and all of my finances with Excel spreadsheets. So here's the main overview of what my portfolio looks like. Now this overview lets me see the big picture of how my portfolio is doing. I can see the value of each sector and how close it is to hitting the target goal that I have for it which lets me easily decide where I need to invest more money in and how to balance it out. Now I have to keep in mind that the value of my portfolio is going up and down as the market goes up and down. So these numbers are constantly readjusting and making up for that, which is why I have formulas built into my spreadsheet so that it automatically updates to match the current amount of my entire portfolio. Now, there's a great tool in Excel that I recommend to everybody if they're using Excel to track finances, and that is the data tab with stocks. Now, it allows you to click on the ticker symbol and break down certain information for the stock itself. You can look at the, the year that it was incorporated, the volume of trades that it's seeing every single day, the price, how like much it closed it down, at market close, at market up, all of those all of those little things you can find within this little data. Also in the overview tab, I can see the big picture of how my dividends are doing. It's broken down monthly and by the different stock sectors. I can easily see that real estate accounts for 30% of my total dividends. I can see the monthly average is about $86 in dividends and I should earn $1,036 in the next 12 months based off of these dividends. 
As most dividends are paid out quarterly and they're coming out on different days and different months, I'm not really concerned with having the exact same total amount of dividends every single month because they're all going to balance out every single quarter anyways. So for some people that might be a big issue if they want to have a balanced $2,000 every single month. That's the average that I'm going for. So it should be $6,000 every single quarter and about $2,000 every single month, give or take. I think being able to see the big picture is so important for keeping focused on where you're headed and what you want it to look like. But I think being able to see each individual stock sector and the individual stocks that you're investing in is just as important. It's like eating your meal and planning your next meal at the exact same time. So if I move into the individual sector tabs on my spreadsheet, I can take a deeper look at each individual sector and each stock within those sectors. So for example, let's take a look at finance, which takes up 25% of my entire portfolio. All of my sectors, all of these tabs are broken down with target goals for each individual stock. I can track the current value of each stock and how much money I spent purchasing it. This allows me to see if I've gained money or if I've lost money over time. We can look at Ellington Financial Incorporated, EFC at the bottom. I don't anticipate holding on to the stock for a long time. So it's not really included in my target goals for the finance sector, hence why there's a 0% target for this stock. Now I am hanging on to them because it does pay a monthly dividend of 14 cents a share, which is just over $90 a year. And it's only down about $35 right now. So for the time being, it's gonna stay in my portfolio, but the company is not on my long-term hold list. I should mention I'm a very visual person. So having a dividend breakdown into the different sectors really helps me understand where and when my dividends are coming in from. Also, each of these sectors, all the data in this information is linked to my overview, that a snapshot of how my entire portfolio is doing. And so everything just keeps updating automatically because all the formulas are in, all the equations are put into place, and so there's minimal maintenance that I need to do to keep this up and running. Now this portfolio breakdown that we've been looking at is more of a present and future device. It doesn't really show what's happened in the past, but more so where we're going in the future. I think it's important to learn from our past and to keep that in our mind as we move forward. So I use an entirely different Excel sheet to track my past earnings and dividends and trades that I've made. And I call that my activity log. With it, I can look at all of my past, past transactions from the very start of when I first started investing in 2013. I can simply pull the report from Ally, which is my brokerage account, every single month and look at all of the dividends and trades and movements that have happened inside of my account and plug the data into the spreadsheet and just keep adding to it and keep building from there. So with inside my activity log, I actually calculate all of my transactions and how much I'm earning from each one of my trades so that I can just keep it in one simple place. I know when I made the trade, what I did with it, and how much I made for it. But just having an activity log that breaks down the dividends and trades that I've made for the past, you know, seven plus years doesn't really help me visualize what's happened with my portfolio. It's just a bunch of numbers. Which is why I have an overview page in this Excel spreadsheet as well. And this is what it looks like. Now I decided to keep this simple because it goes on and on and on for all of these years. But the breakdown is the exact same way. So we're just looking at data from 2021. I use a table to track my monthly swing and day trades and how much money I made for dividends. I also track the balance of my portfolio and what kind of return I earned each month. Now. I pull a balance of my portfolio monthly at the very end of the month or the very start of the month, depending on how you look at it. And I keep that in a separate Excel sheet. It's essentially all of my positions at the exact same time, every single stock that I'm earning just in a big list. So I won't show you that because it's just a list after list after list. But that's how I keep track of that, just so that I have it because I'm a nerd and I like data. <laughs> So visually, looking at this table helps me, but looking at a chart can really put it into perspective of growth and improvement. So I have a simple graph that has just shown my balance increasing over this last year and it helps keep me motivated. And 
have another graph that just simply breaks down my dividends so that I can see that I'm earning a certain amount every single month and it's a very visual reputa representation of what that is, which helps me and because I can. And of course we can't stop there. This is where I go full nerd status. Now, we have the activity log, we have the overview of what everything's done for months and months and years and years, but I want to look at the individual stock level. So that individual company. So I have individual tabs in this Excel spreadsheet that breaks down every single stock that I own. Each one of those tabs breaks down the dividends and the transactions, whether you're buying or selling or trading or whatever I've done with each one of those stocks. It allows me to visualize how a stock and the dividend has been holding up. I focus on companies that increase their dividends periodically over a length of time. So every year or so, we should be seeing an increase in their dividend in the amount of money that they're paying to their shareholders. So let's take a look at Bank of America. And we can see that they actually increased their dividends this year in 2021 from 18 cents to 21 cents. Now a three cent increase is not that big when you're looking at it, but that's actually quite a bit of money. Now I take it one step further and I actually let Excel calculate how much I've invested in the entire stock and what a break even amount would look like if I were to sell the stock today, how much would I need to shell, sell the stock at for me to not lose any money? It's not necessary by any means, but the nerd in me likes it. So speaking of individual stocks, I think it's time for total transparency. So here is my entire breakdown of stocks. I Right now I'm currently invested in 61 different stocks and they're spread out through the various sectors you've already seen my breakdown. Apple holds the biggest percentage of my portfolio with just over 9%. And second place goes to Costco, and third place goes to New York Mortgage Trust with 5.4% and 5.2% respectively. And this year in 2021, I've seen about a 16.1% return or growth in my portfolio. Now I'm not saying that you need to follow my lead and invest in every single stock that I am and follow my specific strategy. This information is purely for educational and informative purposes only. I think a lot of people are not transparent about finances. It's like you don't talk about it. You don't want to like you don't want to let people know if you're in debt or you don't want to talk about how much money you're making because it goes against social norms. And I think that talking about it and being open and honest about where where individuals are at can really help people understand how important making smart financial decisions are, especially when you're younger. And this strategy is not for everybody. I'm a young, young adult. I don't have any kids. I don't have a spouse. I'm not looking to provide for anybody else. So this is my specific strategy at this certain point in my life. So it's going to change and evolve as I evolve and change in life. So I would say for most people, just stick to ETFs and mutual funds and target date funds and let organizations that are experts in this handle the rebalancing and the reinvesting and crunching all the numbers and everything like that for the years and years that you're going to be investing. I only do this because I really enjoy it. Like this is something that I genuinely get excited to go through the numbers every month and geek out on. Like I, it makes me happy, which is why I choose to invest this way. And this isn't my only investment. I have retirement funds with different companies that actually manage it for me right now. So it just kind of depends. I think at the end of the day, what's really most important is that you understand that investing is really important. It's going to get you where you want to go and it's going to make you be able to retire in the end game. So I hope that you've learned something and that regardless of whatever strategy you might want to take or however you want to invest, you're simply just investing and you're planning for your future and whatever way that looks like for you.